on a June night in 1980, Friday the 13th, 12 of her friends were murdered. Why should Friday the 13th, 1981, be any different? Friday the 13th, part two. The 80s was the era of the slasher film. Now these were violent, sometimes funny films that usually featured some kind of masked serial killer, a group of horny teenagers, and lots and lots of murder. Now because these movies could be produced for a small amount of money, and because they ended up making a lot of money in return, Hollywood didn't just give us a few slasher films, they gave us a lot of them. But in 1987, one horror film broke out of the slasher movie mold and went in a different direction, creating a horror movie that was actually original. That film was Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Clive Barker's dark and very violent fantasy horror movie mixed Greek mythology, Christian imagery, as well as contemporary fears of sexually transmitted disease to create a seminal 80s horror flick. How does the film do all this? Well, just give me a few minutes of your time. And let's go back and take a closer look at Hellraiser. We'll tear your soul apart. Now, something that's unique about this movie is how it mixes the horror of the present with the mythology of the past. Now, Hellraiser is based upon the story The Hellbound Heart by writer Clive Barker. Now, Barker's story is built around the people who desire a mysterious puzzle box, a box which, if opened, unleashes the forces of hell. Now, those of you familiar with Greek mythology should recognize the similarity between this story and the myth of Pandora's box. In that story, a woman named Pandora is told never to open a box created by the gods. But one day, Pandora's curiosity gets the best of her, and she ends up opening the box, which then releases all the evils of the world. Now in Hellraiser, once the box is opened, we meet a monster, a now iconic character named Penface who will give you the ultimate physical and sensual experience in exchange for your soul. Now in this aspect, Hellraiser is very similar to the tale of Faust. In Faust, we meet a man who sells his soul to the devil in exchange for wealth and riches. So with Hellraiser, we get a horror film that's bringing ancient myths into the modern world. Each myth serves as a tale of caution for mankind. Those who don't control their desires risk unleashing the forces of hell. While in Pandora's box, it was curiosity that unleashed the horrors of the world. In Hellraiser, it is a sexual curiosity and sexual transgression that unleashes the forces of hell. More specifically, Hellraiser is one of a series of 80s horror films that equate sex with death. Let's think about this. Hellraiser begins with the character of Frank, someone whose search for the ultimate physical and sensual experience leads him to open the mysterious box. We then meet the character of Julia, a sexually repressed wife who is obsessed with Frank and longs for the sexual satisfaction he gave her during a brief affair. Now once a skinless Frank returns from hell, Julia agrees to make him whole again by supplying him with fresh bodies to drain blood from. Again, here the idea of sex equaling death appears because Julia uses the promise of sex to lure unsuspecting men back to her home where she and Frank can kill and drain them of their blood. Now, Julia is doing this because she wants her lover to be physically whole. She wants him to be flesh and blood again. So in Hellraiser, we're getting a movie that centers around people who literally desire the flesh. Now this begs the question, if sex is a beautiful, natural thing, why do so many horror films at this time make sex look dangerous and violent? Slasher films from Halloween to Friday the 13th, all the way to more sophisticated stories like Hellraiser, 
seem to warn against and even punish any form of sexual transgression, such as premarital sex. We have to remember that the 1980s was the height of the AIDS epidemic. Since AIDS was a sexually transmitted disease that could kill you, there was a lot of widespread concern in our culture that sexual promiscuity, particularly sex outside marriage, could lead to death. So in this respect, the monsters of 1980s horror films, particularly Pinface and Hellraiser, those who punish promiscuous teens and sexually curious adults, can be seen as metaphors, symbols, for what befalls those who step outside the bounds of traditional values. When I first saw Hellraiser, I really didn't like it, but the film has grown on me over the years, and the more I see it, the more I find to like and admire about it. But I do want to caution you that it's not a horror film for everyone. It's very bloody and very violent and kind of silly at points. But for horror fans, I do give it a strong recommendation. Thanks for listening. Please post comments below, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.